a CLI demo. Um, who has deployed to AWS before? Oh, more than half. Uh, just what what are the tools that people use to deploy? Like uh, any Terraform users? Uh, okay, uh, CloudFormation, CDK, Pulumi, clicking, clicking around. Are you here to sell us on Heroku? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, okay, so let's, a get, bowl. let's get started. Yeah. So um, Defang is a deployment tool, uh, and it helps you deploy to AWS. And basically, you think of it as a cloud compiler. So the input of the tool is Docker Compose. Many people already use Docker Compose. It's a super high-level description of your application. And it transpiles that deterministically to uh, infrastructure code. Um, now, if you already use Docker Compose, you can just do Defang Compose up. Uh, but if I do that, for example, in this project, it should fail because there is no compose file. And this is actually, an, in the folder I'm in, this is a Heroku uh, project. <laughs> so here we go, this is a Heroku project. Uh, it's running on Heroku, and I want to get off of Heroku, right? So I want to go to AWS, I want to have it in my own account. This is a, it has a database, yeah, it's all, all nice. So let's do a um, defang in it. So if you don't have a Docker Compose file, um, this will get you started. You can generate a project from scratch using AI. It's kind of like table stakes nowadays. Every uh, editor can do that too. We can clone one of our samples, or uh, you can migrate from Heroku. Yes. Um, so it authenticates uh, using uh, Heroku, but I already have the CLI installed. So it uses the CLI to create a temporary token. Pick my Heroku project. I only have one, so that's that's all I can pick. Is this big enough for people? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Uh, pick that project. And so it talks to Heroku APIs to find out what, what's there, any databases there, any dynos there, and it's generating a compose file based off of uh, that, all the information that Heroku gives. So let's uh, have that uh, go. All right, so we have a few warnings that we can dig into. Oh, I wanted to zoom in, but this might be excessive. Okay, so here, here you see the only thing that changed is this new compose file. Now let's have a look at it. Uh, it has a web service with a health check. It has a release task for migrations, uh, talking to a database. That seems reasonable. <coughs> um, and it has a database, a Postgres database, with uh, parameters uh, that, you know, it's nice that it didn't put passwords in the compose file, I appreciate that. It has a health check there too. Um, yeah, okay. Let's uh, deploy this. So defang up. All right. Okay, I need to authenticate to AWS. That makes sense. Let's get started. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna show off our um, MCP server. Um, instead of me typing, I'm just gonna do here. Uh, I'm gonna set up uh, the agent. Set it up for AWS deployments, giving my AWS uh, credentials. I'm going to deploy to US West 2. And then I say, uh, before I deploy, how, how much would this cost to deploy? <laughs> Let's ask that. So I'm not deploying yet. I'm just asking it how much would it cost. So it's invoking the, the Defang uh, estimate tool. So all of these tools are also available in the CLI. Um, it's just that this is a very friendly way of uh, talking to, to the tool, right? You're just talk, chatting with the agent. Now, I might be zoomed in a bit too much, so we can't actually see what it's doing. So what, what did it do? Oh, here we go. Um, cost estimate for AWS deployment, affordable mode, uh, $22 uh, estimated monthly cost, except uh, like that excludes the usage. Right? Okay, so now it's doing uh, oh, did it actually deploy it? I think you hit the button when you're scrolling up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's actually deploying it. Okay, cool. So it's deploying the application now uh, to AWS. It gave me a, a URL here. All right, I can actually... All right. Um, then... All right, it's up and running. So this is now running on uh, AWS. Uh, migrated from Heroku. Let's, let's see if it actually works. Uh, register... Um, 
going to take me like 15 minutes to have a pass for the <laughs> We can pass for longer. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn it. Can, can I just, yeah, use, use this? This, this, this? There we go. Yes, yes, strong. Um, so this should be talking to a database and everything. Yeah, so here we go. It's actually talking to the database. Uh, all up and running in my account. So this is my AWS account. Let me log in there. Uh, all right, so what was the name of my app? DFNG, this, this one here. Defang Django Heroku. Yeah, so what that, what that ended up happening, it has a uh, container, web container. Uh, it built it for us, um, and it's running in ECS, and it's uh, configured. I, I know I'm over time, but uh, the last thing I want to show you is actually using a managed database. We're not spinning up like a Postgres inside uh, a container or anything like that. Nice. So it's spinning up, uh, yeah, it's probably this one here. Right, so it, it, it configured RDS with, uh, yeah, with uh, Postgres. Uh, we also support language models, we also support Redis, so anything in your Compose file gets mapped to the best thing in, in the AWS. So if you use a language model, for example, Docker has a language runner, if you use a language model, it will use backlog when you deploy. So yes. that's it. Nice. Are other than AWS are integrated with or uh, uh, well, it's an AWS event, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the tool does support uh, GCP DigitalOcean, but nice. AWS is our number one uh, yeah, yeah. target. Go to. Yeah. Awesome. Doesn't A in Thanks they stand for uh, Amazon? <laughs> A in where? In uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the A's is in uh, is Amazon. Let's say yeah. <laughs> What else do you support besides Heroku? So this migration story, Heroku is the first one. Okay. Because that's a signal that we got from our customers. They, they want to go, well, two signals, right? Make it easier to go to AWS, and how do we move our apps from one place to another? So uh, this is the first one, yeah. Is the idea to add more sources? Yeah, definitely based off of uh, customer feedback. Um, because the, the, the input to our tool is a compose file, and then we are just like, how do we get people, uh, with a how do we get a compose file, right? So generate from scratch, generate from prompt, generate from an existing as deployed, right? Yeah. Um, like for example, we have uh, a, a prototype that's not released yet, uh, Beanstalk. Like people yeah. wanna, still on AWS, but they wanna move away from Elastic Beanstalk, and so we have a, a generator for that as well. So generating compose file from Elastic Beanstalk gets you into a scalable ECS deployment. Was another one there. Yeah. Can you move away from AWS with this tool? <laughs> 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 uh, um, what else did it spin up in the background? So I know we kind of ran, speed ran through the affordable mode, but uh, what, are, what else did it? Yeah, so affordable for? mode is you know trying to keep it cheap. If you, for example, go and, and I ask for uh, what about uh, availability mode, did that even spell that correctly? I have no idea. It doesn't. The best thing with language models is that they're very receptive. Uh, yeah. yeah, you don't really have to spell away. Um, so now it's doing an estimation for high availability. By the way, these numbers are live. These are, this is not like as perplexity how much would this cost, right? It, it's training data will have some numbers in it. But this is us talking to the APIs and, and figuring out what things cost before to deploy. So now you see uh, high availability features are multi-AZ deployments. Uh, you end up with $150 a month. Uh, you have for the load balancer, three net gateways, uh, our DB R5 large database, 25 a month. Uh, you have ephemeral storage that you pay for and compute. And uh, we don't use spot discount when we do high availability. Now do you get paid a commission from AWS? Um, actually, we're working on it because we can actually <laughs> onboard you and, and provision an account for you, so we're working on that. <laughs> You would like to become a reseller. How long would it take you to build that out yourself? Uh, okay, so we did an experiment. Like we had an intern that came and was working with us uh, for two months. And he's like, I don't know what the tool does. Why can't people just go to AWS? So it took him a week to spin up the app in, AWS, in, in ECS, you know, by using uh, Amazon guides only. And it wasn't running by the end of the week. And so that's when he now knew, okay, that is useful, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I guess it's a follow-up question. Can you just replace my EC2 like panel or AWS website with just this so that I talk to it, you know? 
That's not just that, employee, but just you know everything else too. Well, uh, maybe I don't understand the question. If you have existing, uh, if you have existing resources, you just talk to them, right? You, you can add here uh, my uh, service. Uh, no, URL. I mean like you know, it's it, it's great that you have like billing here and stuff. Can you just like instead of going through dashboards on the AWS website, can you just like ask your MCP like how much did I? Spent last month, like that type of stuff. Well, yes, but that's a different kind of tool, right? Then we're just providing. Then we're making a chat for Amazon. Amazon should be making that chat. <laughs> that's true. That's a good idea. It's called Q. Yes, yeah, that's true, though. Yeah, Q. You can add Q to your Slack, and you can ask those kind of questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, any, any other? I don't know my time. I might be close. You, you still have a few minutes. Okay, any, any other questions? So, can you just migrate certain things without migrating the whole thing? Like, if you were from a Heroku, you just want to do it. Yeah, you, you basically just. So, it's not. It didn't delete my Heroku deployment, right? So, wow. I, it, I'm on the hook to move data. It doesn't copy data, for example. It doesn't spin down Heroku. It just gets you uh, copies on the environment. Setup okay. So, if you say, oh, that these are some of the services that it ended up uh, copying, I don't need them. You just delete them for your compose file. Mm, okay. You can just delete those. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, I have so many questions. Uh, <laughs> so, like, let's say I have a database, and it spins up a new database, right? When I'm migrating. Is, is there, like, a way to, does it migrate the data to? No, well, it does not, no. It's not a data migration tool. There's hundreds of data migration tools, <laughs> so that's a startup in itself. But uh, you just basically, because it's in your account, right? You, you just use whatever Amazon has to offer. So okay. you can restore from snapshot, you can uh, uh, run a SQL script, you know, those, those are just tools. Uh, it does run tasks, right? So it did, in fact, add a, a migration task. So you can use the existing Python or Ruby, whatever you use, to run a import task uh, using this kind of uh, syntax. Uh, this is all standard. Uh, uh, Docker Compose, right? So if you can, if you want to say, bump web service memory to eight gigabyte, because it's it's a standard, the language models know uh, what to do if you want to change. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to deploy this. I'm just going to show you. It knows how to play with this uh, Compose file because it's a standard. Are there any limits, um, like that you found, with, like you know? Like Docker Compose, obviously, is very specific to containerization. And, you know, it's a specific machine. Did you find there were any problems uh, mapping, you know, from yeah. Docker Compose to AWS, where you're like, oh, geez, I wish I had an extension on like a Docker Compose extended. Okay, so like that. Okay. first, the extension. We do have extensions, like ha! all the managed services. <laughs> yes. yeah. So those are all the managed services are are, are opt in because there's additional costs. Sure. Right. So if you don't have this. Yeah. It'll still work, but yeah. it'll be running Postgres in a container, right? right. So we have a few of these, uh, Mongo, uh, Postgres, Redis, those are opt-in. Um, S3, object storage, does not map right. to a Compose file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's something that you provision yourself or use AWS CLI, and then you just point to the to your bucket and, and call it a day. What's the things if that's map. the case, what's the purpose of using like this DSL? You know, from from Docker, uh, instead of just coming up with your own. Ah, uh, because eighty percent of the teams already have this. Yeah, they already have a so compose just, file. So you can quickly it. check that like the entire system works by calling Docker up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can yeah Docker compose up for local iteration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Com Defend compose up for. Yeah, different. I was just curious. Yeah. yeah just what about videos? Is that, is that if you run Docker up and you run Minio, it replaces. Um, yeah. So Minio uh, replaces the. Not the bucket, but the service, yes. right? So there's no such thing in Amazon. Amazon is bucket uh, focused. Yeah. So a bucket is not something you express in, in Minio. What about Kafka where the, 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 the configuration of Docker is way different than, than Yeah, so we, there's a bunch of services. We're focusing on the ones that are kind of universal, like Postgres, Redis. Uh, managed Kafka, Apple Cloud has managed Kafka now, so we could do that. But again, it's based on uh, customer uh, feedback. So, uh, great questions. I really appreciate it. Uh, find me after. <laughs> <laughs>